Joining me now to talk more about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and all things coronavirus related here in Shelby County in the Mid-South is Dr. Stephen Threlkeld, an infectious disease expert at Baptist Memorial Hospital in Memphis. Dr. Threlkeld, thank you for joining us today. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. All right. Before we get to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, have you had your second dose yet and which vaccine did you receive? I am three weeks out from the Pfizer series, the second shot, and I had little to no problems. I was very fortunate. It didn't even have the mild side effects. Excellent. Good for you. All right, let's talk about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. How encouraging is the news that they delivered today and the data they shared? Well, particularly given the difficulty we've been getting rolling out the vaccine, to have another effect, uh, another vaccine available to us uh, where the company says they can roll out a, a billion vaccines in the course of this year, that's really encouraging. 66% available are uh, effective worldwide, 72% in the U.S., and even to the moderate to severe disease, even better against, uh, against preventing the most severe forms of the disease. So it's very encouraging to have another weapon in this, in this battle. Absolutely. It'll be even better when we get that weapon here in Shelby County. Let's talk about the vaccination process in Shelby County, if we can. Your reaction to the long lines and wait times. Well, it's been so difficult because from the top down, uh, the organization of this has been really difficult. And so it, it's it's very difficult for someone at the level to deal with a very, uh, you know, difficult to put out their vaccine. We don't get the, the flow from the state. We don't get the flow above that from the federal government. And it's been extremely difficult to plan for these sorts of things. I and mean, we've done better than a lot of places, in fact, uh, but the, we can always do better. And I think just getting to know where the vaccines are and how many are going to be coming to individual uh, you know, localities or something that we haven't done. And it's really pointing, certainly, but, but I think they're about to get better with increased supply of vaccines like this extra Johnson & Johnson product. Let's also talk about the other big controversy today, and that is Governor Lee calling on SCS to reopen and get kids back in the classroom. The superintendent, Dr. Joris Ray, saying, no, nope, we're going to hold off. Do you think it is safe for Shelby County school children and teachers to return to the classroom right now? Well, it's a very complicated question because there are a lot of factors. If you look at the, the latest data from the CDC, studies are showing more and more that the classroom is pretty safe. I mean, a, a study from Wisconsin showed that of the kids uh, K-12 through that they studied, only 3.7% of the cases that occurred in those school-age kids actually were felt to happen in school. So if we're worried about the cases that are occurring in classrooms, we better be 50 times as worried about the cases that are uh, occurring outside the classroom. But both of those certainly are partly dependent on community transmission. And that's going down too. So we hope that it will get safer and safer the more we go and that we can get teachers vaccinated so everybody aboard will be safer. And let's talk about vaccinating teachers. How important is it to get that done? I think it's very important. I think that's one of those things, you know, you, you want to protect the healthcare system, you want to you want to protect the oldest folks and the people who are most likely to be to really sick and to die from this infection, but also societal things like schools come into play. I mean, I mean having our kids in school, everybody agrees, is much preferable to what we've had to do. So, I think vaccinating teachers would be an integral part of that and I hope that they will put up the ladder really in the vaccine process as just a very important factor in the well-being of everybody. Final question before I let you go. We have 30 seconds left. Researchers in Brazil say they found two people who had two variants of the virus. They were infected with two kinds of the virus at the same time. Have we had anything like that here? And have we had any of the variants here in Shelby County that you know of? Well, the problem in the U.S. in general is that we haven't seen enough virus. So it is probably already here. Uh, we haven't had two vir viruses at the same time that we know, but we know this happens in other viruses. That's the kind of uh, that's the sort of thing that, that we're likely to see along the way. The main thing is to sequence to know where these viruses are and to to be looking forward to the vaccines to make changes as those companies are already planning for. And do you have to get a booster dose? You got you said you got the Pfizer vaccine. They're talking about a booster dose to handle these variants. Do you have to get one? Not yet, but they are looking at those variants like the South African and the Brazilian viruses that could become more to the vaccine over time. Probably already is a little resistant, but not enough to make a difference. But the beauty of this new vaccine uh, platform, messenger RNA, that we can plug and play new vaccines with those variants already in them and make things safer down the road as well. And they're already looking at that. All right. Good stuff, Dr. Threlkeld. I know you're busy treating COVID-19 patients. We appreciate you taking the time to talk with us about these very important topics. So again, Dr. Threlkeld with Baptist Memorial Hospital, thank you, sir, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.
All right, and to watch this interview again, if you'd like to do that, just visit our website, wmcactionnews5.com.